Tajikistan under the great leadership of the President Imomoli Rehmon has achieved one of the most spectacular developments in the world history over a small period of just 20 years. It is really a miracle of achievement because soon after its independence from erstwhile Soviet Union, in 1994, Tajikistan was plunged into a bloody civil war, which further devastated the already fragile economy of newly independent nation of Tajikistan. However, a peaceful election in 1999 and the formation of central government under the leadership of President Imomali Rehmon changed all this. The most surprising aspect of this miraculous change is that Tajikistan has achieved transition from a planned to a market economy without substantial and protracted resource to external aids and by purely market-based means. The greatest achievement of President Rehmon is really twofold. On one hand, he ensured the establishment of a modern secular republic with peace, stability and liberal democratic values. And on the other hand, he ably guided and led the nation towards a peaceful transition from a war-torn economy to self-sustainable industrialized market economy. This foresighted vision soon bore fruits in the form of all-round progress and development. Tajikistan is now well entrenched on the road to progress and prosperity. So much so that while moving along the Rudaki Avenue in the Tajik capital and the beautiful city of Dushanbe with the usual hustle-bustle of a modern western capital, large buildings and skyscrapers on both sides of roads and electric bus transporting people from one end of the city to another. It is one of the most peaceful places in the world where you can drive along or move around anywhere in the sunshine of the day or in the middle of the night without any fear. The spectacular achievement of a consistent above 9% growth has resulted into far-reaching progress and prosperity and changed the pattern and lifestyle of people. Tajikistan's economy grew substantially after the war. The GDP of Tajikistan expanded at an average rate of 9.6% over the period of 2000 to 2007, according to the World Bank data. This improved Tajikistan's position among other Central Asian countries. Tajikistan is now an active member of the Economic Cooperation Organization. A number of structural reforms necessary for the efficient functioning of a market economy have been implemented. The most recent analysis suggests that these positive trends are continuing reflecting the effects of post-conflict reconstruction and stability. Tajikistan, with a population of around 7.5 million people, consists of four administrative divisions. These are the provinces of Viloyat of Sukht, Khatlong, the autonomous province of Gorno-Badakshaw, and the region of Republic Subordination. 
Dushanbe, the capital of Tajikistan, comes under RRP province. The primary sources of income in Tajikistan are aluminium production, cotton growing and remittances from migrant workers. Foreign remittance flows from Tajik migrant workers abroad, mainly in Russia, has become by far the main source of income for millions of Tajikistan's people and represents additional 36.2% of country's GDP directly reaching the poverty-stricken population. Migration from Tajikistan and the consequent remittances have been unprecedented in their magnitude and economic impact. The country has been exporting its main commodity of comparative advantage, that is, cheap labour. World Bank in its Tajikistan policy note concludes that remittances have played an important role as one of the drivers of Tajikistan's robust economic growth during the past several years, have increased income and, as a result, helped in reducing poverty significantly. industry is represented by the state-owned Talco, which has the biggest aluminium plant in Central Asia and one of the biggest in the world. The large changes have touched cotton industry. The installment abolition of the state monopoly in this area was implemented. Energy is the bloodline of the economy. In Tajikistan, after the Soviet collapse, there was a very difficult situation with the economy, fuel and energy resources. Tajikistan has a low level of supply of natural gas and oil, but has huge resources of hydro and coal. Yes, Tajikistan is really the hydro hotbed. It has great water sources for hydropower and if developed properly, it can be a big time power supplier to the neighbouring countries which can further boost its economy. Soon after its formation, the government of Tajikistan laid great emphasis on sustainable energy generation and development. It was realised that no economic or industrial growth is possible without sufficient energy and power capacity. With a view to this, the government of Tajikistan focused its attention on great hydroelectric potential of the country and chalked out a long-term plan to attract proper investments needed to explore and exploit this potential to the fullest capacity. Tajikistan is now home to the hydroelectric power station at Nurek with the highest dam in the world. The latest development is Russia's RAO UES energy giant working on Santuda 1 hydroelectric power station with 670 megawatt capacity, which commenced operations on 18th January 2008. utility company which is generating, transmitting and distributing um, the total cell capacity of the common is 43 uh, megawatt and we're actually now uh, locating at the biggest power plant of it, we're generating 70% of the capacity, it's a Palmyr 1 power plant. As you know that Tajikistan is in the top six, in fact utilizing about 60% of the hydro resources and uh, uh, Pamir Energy is the first private utility company in the government of Tajikistan uh, has implemented as a pilot project so that in future it can invest more or, or uh, attract more investments. 
Other projects at the development stage include Santuda 2 by Iran, Zarafsha by Chinese, Sino Hydro and Rogan Power Plant with a projected dam height of 335 meters. In addition to hydropower, Tajikistan also has other energy resources that include sizable coal deposits and smaller reserves of natural gas and petroleum. Effective and reliable infrastructure services are essential to economic growth and contribute much to an improvement in living conditions. Such services directly affect the poor by increasing access to goods and services, jobs and information, enhancing the freedom of movements and improving access to healthcare and education. Our university has a, a lot of learning centers, equipped learning centers. That's why we are, uh, welcome all the yours to come to our university, not only from our Tajikistan, maybe from other foreign countries, uh, to learn Hindi or other language in our university. You are welcome always. The government's main objective in this sector is to provide access to reliable and affordable public services in the areas of energy, transport, information and communication and safe drinking water. While in urban areas, the focus is on improving reliability of infrastructure. In rural areas, its priority is to provide access to services which currently are not available in many outlying areas. In transport, resources are being allocated not just to rehabilitating and maintaining the system of main highways, but also on establishing an effective network of feeder roads. In setting tariffs for these services, the government has considered both the need for enterprises providing services to be financially self-supporting and the importance of ensuring affordability of tariffs to the poor. Tajikistan has done a lot to improve the business climate and strengthen its capacity in attracting investments. Tajikistan ranked amongst the top 10 reforming countries in the World Bank doing business survey for 2010. Tajikistan amended its insolvency law, aiming to reduce statutory time limits and the costs of proceedings. Changes were introduced that simplified the construction permit process, reducing procedures and time. A new law on credit histories improves access to credit information by creating a private credit bureau. Investor protections were strengthened with amendments to the joint stock company law. Business startup was eased by introducing a one-stop shop for registration, reducing the minimum capital requirement and shortening the time to obtain a tax identification number. Development of small and medium enterprises and businesses plays a very important and active role in accelerating the process of macroeconomic stabilization and achieving high economic growth. SME has great potential because of certain common qualities such as their flexible structures, increased susceptibility to innovation, technological progress and reacting quickly to changes in public demand. SME does not require large investments and its activities are aimed at ensuring the needs of the domestic market with consumer goods, services to increase employment, reduce unemployment and poverty reduction. The government is ensuring that all citizens, regardless of their levels of income, get wider access to curative care and public health services. Strong support will also be given to improving the quality of medical services and providing the right balance between preventive and curative care. Garam Chashma lies in southeast of Khoro. At 2,325 meters 
above sea level. It is a hot spring known for several thousand years. Health is a fundamental element of welfare. Improvements in the healthcare sector could significantly contribute to the development of the human potential. The Tajikistan government's policy in this sector is aimed at improvement of healthcare in the country that will allow to positively affect the growth. Agriculture continued to grow in 2009, boosted mostly by a sharp increase in non-cotton agricultural production. The government, with the help of donors, has resolved a long-standing farm debt problem. As a result, more than 350 million US dollars of debt owed by the cotton farms to a conglomerate of domestic and international investors have been written off and the remaining 114 million US dollars are to be restructured. Agriculture may be a driving force for growth if land reform is completed and freedom to farm is guaranteed. A strong growth in agriculture sector in 2009 was largely due to efforts to diversify agricultural production. This has also increased domestic food production, partly easing the burden of high food prices. Recently, Tajik President Inomali Rahman called on Tajiks to start building up food reserves amidst soaring grain prices, suggesting that each family stockpile enough basic foodstuffs to last for two years. I want to remind you that every family should have a two-year reserve of basic food products. First of all, wheat, he said. There are a wide variety of dried fruits that are grown and sold in Tajikistan. Some famous dry fruits of Tajikistan are almond, cashew nuts, dried plums, dry dates, cranberries, blueberries, cherries, strawberries, figs, pistachios, raisins and walnuts. In Tajikistan, you can enjoy some of the best tasting honey in the world. while supporting the community that brought it to you. Much of the rich, sweet honey that is exported outside is produced by beekeepers who follow this as a family trade. With the help of the government now and many new schemes to promote beehive trade and honey production, beekeepers and their families earn better incomes for their hard work which allows them to stay on their land and keep their kids in school. Tajikistan hotels offer you a luxurious stay amidst the river valleys surrounded by large mountain peaks and dense natural flora. The hospitality extended by Tajikistan hotels to its guests have always been commendable. Most of the Tajikistan hotels are situated near the most important places of sightseeing. The rooms and suites are designed lavishly so as to offer you the most comfortable stay.
the weaving industry in Tajikistan is fast growing now after the government has focused its attention on this handicraft sector and has come out with new schemes of development. This famous age-old domestic industry has always been one of the backbones of Tajik society and an integral part of its culture and tradition. The colourful woven designs are still part of Tajik costumes along with the modern dress style. Under the new schemes of the government, this industry is expected to flourish more rapidly. The expansions and modernization of this industry will also boost the exports. The carpet industry is very old and still thriving. Since ancient times, Tajikistan has been famous for its art and craft and carpet making. The intricate works of arts on carpets are admired all over the world. The government of Tajikistan has come out with new initiatives to boost this age-old industry and helps craftsmen with different kind of incentives so that they could flourish and grow in the fast-paced modern world. The tourism industry is fast developing in Tajikistan as it is now attracting tourists from all over the world. After being under the Iron Curtain of the erstwhile USSR for a long period, Tajikistan has remained virtually a virgin territory from the tourist point of view in modern times. But as more and more tourists around the world are discovering the unique features of this country, and its great natural beauty, along with its historical and cultural importance, the tourism industry in the country is scaling new heights by leaps and bounds. Tajikistan has achieved spectacular growth in just a decade. It is certainly a great achievement to reach this high level of growth in such a short time. The growth in traditional sectors such as cotton and aluminium combined with remittances has enabled Tajikistan to sustain its better economic performance. In this fast developing Tajikistan, people have much better prospect of education, health, jobs, social security and wonderful lifestyle. Tajikistan is truly shining now. Yes, it is shining Tajikistan. Iski tehzeeb nurani, iski tarikh purani Sun lo dunia walo, sun lo hum sab hai Tajikistani Iski tehzeeb nurani, iski tarikh परचम था में अमन का परचम था में सुन लो दुनिया वालों सुन लो हम सब हैं ताजिकिस्तानी इसकी तहजीब नूरानी इसकी तारीफ 